Hi there, I'm Chef Eric Crowley, owner of the Culinary Classroom in West Los Angeles. And today we are going to make a strawberry creme brulee. We will need two cups or one pint of heavy cream. Whipping cream will wind up working just fine. I have here about uh, three quarters of a cup of rinsed and uh, diced strawberries, five egg yolks, a third of a cup plus two tablespoons of granulated sugar, a small pinch of salt, and half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. We are going to take our heavy cream and begin to scald it. That means we're going to place it into a medium-sized pot and put it over a high heat just until it starts to begin to boil. While that is scalding, we can go ahead and we can separate our eggs. You can check that out on a, another video on mahalo.com. So the bubbling comes around the rim of the pot prior to it actually bubbling all over the surface and boiling over, and that is scalding. We're gonna take our sugar and combine it with our egg yolks with our little pinch of salt and half a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm gonna blend these together with a whip. Get them really nicely combined. So we're gonna do a classic technique that we call tempering. And that involves taking our hot liquid and incorporating it into some eggs by gradually pouring it in while we're constantly whipping and moving around our egg yolks. Gonna take the hot cream and slowly pour it in. Notice I'm also pouring the cream and letting it drip over the wires of the whip. That's gonna help cool off the cream. And that's also gonna help uh, bring up the temperature of the eggs. And I find the easiest way to get it into my custard cups is to pour it into a pitcher. A pitcher with a spout works really, really well. I like to utilize custard cups like these that have a fairly wide surface area and they're fairly short, they're not very tall. That way the baking time will actually be reduced a little bit and the nice big wide cup gives a really good presentation to the guest. For our strawberries, we're gonna go ahead and take our freshly cut strawberries and sprinkle as many as you like in the bottom of the cups. As you can imagine, you could probably also do this with any other fruit that you happen to find uh, seasonally. If raspberries or blueberries are in season, they'll wind up working very well also. And then we pour the custard over the top. And our goal is to get these guys covered so the guest winds up digging into the custard and finds their strawberries. I have them in a nice big pan that actually has tall sides to it. And in the bottom of the pan, I have a towel. Uh, what the towel is going to do is it's going to uh, help keep the cups from sliding around as you start to move the pan. And we're gonna wind up creating what's called a bain-marie. We're gonna take some really nice hot water right off the boil and pour it into this pan, typically enough to come halfway up the side, the outside of the ramekin. So here I have some hot water right off of the boil. And some pastry chefs will even take the cus one custard cup out of the pan but this we're doing just fine. If you don't have a pan this size, you could use something like a Pyrex baking dish. You may have to actually use two if you're making six or seven of these. Once we have the water coming up halfway up the side of the custard cup, this is gonna wind up going into a 350 oven. I usually check it after about 20 minutes, and one of the things I'm looking for is a, a jello-like jiggle to it. When I have that, take them out, let them cool off, so the custard has uh, come out of the oven. Uh, it's really important to let it cool completely. If you have the opportunity, uh, let it refrigerate overnight. Be really uh, wonderful. The idea between that, by that is that you're actually looking for a really cold custard and we're gonna have a hot, uh, uh, crispy sugar coating on top. I'm gonna wind up taking some granulated sugar. If it's lumpy, go ahead and sift it. And we're going to sprinkle the sugar on the top. Get a nice even layer. The more sugar you put on top of the custard, the thicker of a sugary crust you're gonna get. So if you really like a lot of sugar, go right ahead and, and sprinkle a lot of sugar on. You wanna try and sprinkle it pretty evenly as well. And then we're gonna wind up utilizing a propane torch. I have one here that's got a plumber's nozzle on it, so I don't have to turn the torch upside down. And I'm gonna take the flame and slowly lower it onto the sugar. And you can see how the sugar starts to melt. One of the things that's really important is that you move it around. You don't wanna let it set in one spot I like to focus on the sugar that hasn't been melted yet. It's gonna send up some smoke, so you wanna open up your uh, window, turn on your uh, exhaust fan, and definitely try not to breathe in the smoke. It'll make you hack. And you can see how the sugar starts to go from a clear sphere to a golden and then a deep amber sphere. It's starting to caramelize. 
And we're actually gonna be blackening it. The word brulee means to blacken in French. You wanna burn this sugar. It's about the only time I'm gonna tell you to burn something. Notice I'm gonna move the torch around, focus on the unmelted white portions of the sugar. And if I think that it's burning too rapidly, I can pull the torch up and keep moving it around. And there we're getting a really nice burnt sugar crust on the top. And there we are. That is how to torch, how to burn sugar on top of a creme brulee. Okay. Our goal here is to have, once this cools off, it's gonna form a really, really hard shell. It's gonna have a slight bitterness to it in addition to the sweetness. And that's kind of the juxtaposi juxtaposition we're looking for. We're looking for a really sweet, creamy custard underneath and a really hard, crackled, slightly bitter, sweet sugar crust on top. So after our sugar has cooled off slightly and forms a nice hard shell, this is our finished strawberry creme brulee. Keep in mind that there's gonna be nice chunks of strawberries underneath the custard to surprise your guest. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on other links so you can get other recipes. If you don't see something that interests you, email a request to requests at mahalo.com. Also be sure to subscribe so you can get lots of wonderful additional information. Thanks and I'll see you soon.